Lincoln Riley having a good time at the Super Bowl. Speaking of which, uh, something that he can't or could not do when he was the head coach at Oklahoma. And so USC celebrities showing up and um, doing more than just preparing for a football season to win games. But again, it's got to sell in regards to entertainment in L.A. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. like We know people are excited in Los Angeles about USC football. We know there it's, it's an electric vibe and the, the, the program is being restored. But Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, they're not sitting on their butts just you know allowing this to happen and just assuming that uh, excitement is going to continue to build. They are working to continue to develop that excitement. And they realize that, like, this is important, not just for USC, but for the Pac-12. You have to get the word out. You have to promote your brand. You have to be aggressive. We talked about this last week when talking about how George Klyavkov reacted to the Caleb Williams transfer. Larry Scott didn't didn't put in the work. Klyavkov is. And so we saw Lincoln Riley tweeting out his 50-yard line sweet box uh, at SoFi Stadium for the Super Bowl. We saw Caleb Williams over the Super Bowl weekend in LA attending the USC UCLA basketball game at the Galen Center and sending the student section into a frenzy. So like they're they're putting in the work to promote the USC brand and if people think that this is just cosmetic or atmospheric and doesn't contain a lot of value, here's the thing. If there's a really tough close college football playoff debate in 2022 or maybe 2023 and USC is just on that knife's edge against the big 12 champion uh, or the other number potential number four seed. It's this kind of stuff that cements that brand and, and cements that identity, which says, okay, you know, USC deserves to be here. USC is supposed to be in the playoff. And, you know, obviously Pete Carroll never had the chance to be in a four team playoff he would have loved to have been there because all the years that he barely missed getting in that the BCS one versus two title game, USC would have been a three or a four seed. And given Pete Carroll's track record with a month to prepare, uh, you know, having that defensive game plan ready to ambush an opponent would have been right up his alley. So like Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams, they both know that they need to be planting seeds right now in the media, getting themselves out, in the media bloodstream, you saw Caleb Williams also going on Good Morning America earlier this month. So it's just they are putting in the work. And the contrast with Clay Helton goes so much beyond the fact that Clay Helton wasn't a good football coach. It was that Clay Helton was lazy as a recruiter, as a promoter, in terms of doing all the daily things that you need to do around the clock. You know, college football now is a 12-month-a-year uh, sport much like the NFL with the transfer portal like the transfer portal has made college football a year-round sport and so Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams they get that not just as competitors but in terms of working the media working the public relations angle getting out that that good message providing goodwill in and around the community and they're hoping that that's going to carry a benefit for them if there is a 50-50 debate with another competitor in a, in a college football playoff uh, competition coming up soon. So, you know, they're putting in the work, and that's really the big story at USC, also in the Pac-12 offices, just this new wave of leadership in the conference and at USC understands in ways their predecessors did not how to market and how to grow a program.